How ironic is it that Monate's shenanigans have me working more in this week, really this month, than I have ever in my life. Not Monate making me girl boss. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea, just a lady with a bulldoggy camera and too many opinions. You know that. I know it, we all know it. Just a little disclaimer, two disclaimers really. I am not a lawyer. I'm sorry, did you think I was? What are you doing? <laughs> Yikes. I'm not a lawyer. I, like I said, I'm just a lady with a bulldog, a camera and too many opinions. This is not legal advice. I'm not stating any of this as a fact. This is basically just my super uneducated, unofficial, not professional, unsolicited, let's be honest, understanding of these legal documents that I'm about to read and I don't know, these satire, a joke, entertainment, whatever you want it to be, really. There may be our Lord and Savior, Wiggum, underneath my desk right now, literally sitting on my foot, laying on my foot. It's very warm. Let's go ahead and get into it. So I actually just posted today the first complaint in the Tony Van Schoik versus Monate Global lawsuit, where she is basically suing them for breach of contract, defamation, and you know, all that. Well, at the end of that video, because it's only like 12 minutes, I was like, oh, by the way, I'm probably gonna have to do a very quick update to this video because I'm sure that they are going to have another filing in with the next within the next day or two, because I saw on the timeline there that they had to put in an amended complaint because it seemed like the judge needed more information from them or was requesting more information from them, which is understandable since their complaint, in my opinion, was pretty short. So I have the new documents here. The last one I think was like eight or nine pages. And then this one is 16 pages. This is just speculation, but you know, yes, this one does have more information and it is, it is a bit more detailed. I am of the opinion, the unprofessional opinion. Again, who asked for it? Nami, Tony and her husband, and Jay, that they do have a lot more information and a lot more receipts and stuff. So I personally think, and it has been speculated, allegated, that once Uno, once Uno, clearly not a lawyer, that once money, if they do the good old Uno reverse, you know, as they typically do, it seems like, and they come in with a counterclaim that Tony will then come back and be like, well, here's my response and here's all the facts and here's all this. I know I make fun of boomers a lot and boomer is a state of mind as we know, and not to sound like one, but do y'all know how expensive things are getting? Just life in general. It's real crazy. Last week, my grocery bill is like $300 a week. And now I pay for childcare too, which is amazing. Love it. I'm spending so much money. <laughs> Upside, the sponsor of today's video. Thank you, by the way, Upside. Let's you earn cash back. Not to sound like one of the MLM boss babes, but on things that you're already spending money on every day. Using it is so easy. All you have to do is claim the offer of what you're buying on the Upside app and then go ahead and just pay for it how you already would with your credit card or debit card. And yes, it's real cash back. No confusing rewards or points, just actual money that you can transfer to your bank account. And top Upside earners are making as much as $300 a month. I gotta send this kid college or like keep feeding them <laughs> at least. There are over 85,000 gas stations, grocery stores, and restaurants to use on the Upside app. So the first thing I did after downloading, obviously, was looking at what places around me not only are on Upside, but then also the places I go to the most. So for instance, all of, so for instance, all of the gas stations that are within a mile of my house, let me rephrase that, all the nice ones that I actually go to, because you know, sometimes there's sketchy ones, all of those are on Upside, along with both of my favorite pizza places that are right down the street from us and Smoothie King too. And I, oh, I love Smoothie King. And I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't just like big chain names of restaurants and stores that are on Upside. It's also like locally owned places too. For instance, one of my favorite places to go get super specific, more healthier items on my grocery list in South Tampa is Pomacia Village Health Market and Cafe. Girly pop. Now I get 9% cash back there. That's crazy. Over $1 million in cash back is being earned by Upside users each week. So find out how much you can earn by clicking the link in my description box and use the code CC Suarez to get an extra 25 cents cash back on every gallon of your first tank of gas. I mean, you're welcome. <laughs> and of course, that offer is only available for you guys if you go through that link in my description box and use my promo code CC Suarez. 
or to make it easier for you, you can scan the QR code on the screen now. And thank you again, Upside, for sponsoring this video. And thank you to you guys for supporting my sponsors and my channel in general. Now back to the video. Let's go ahead and get into this. So just like last time, I highlighted some key points. And this is public information, so you can look it up too if you want to read through all of it. However, I want to go over like mainly the new stuff. If you want to watch the other video I did about this, then go ahead and go watch that. But here we have pen down here, which was different than it said in the first one this actually like has the amount that she's requesting in it because obviously with you know civil cases you do have to assign like a monetary value to it sometimes it's literally a dollar or just like legal fees but this ain't just dollar this is a lot of dollars and so it says the amount and controversy of each of the counts set forth below exceeds the sum of seventy five thousand dollars exclusive of interest and costs. Plaintiff's total claim of damages from the defendants is not less than $2,750,000. Exclusive, blah, 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 right? Like, oof, that's a lot, that's a lots of monies. Should have just paid her, y'all. <laughs> Yikes. Allegedly. I feel like I just need to get like a shirt that says allegedly. 13. Between 2015 and 2022, plaintiff earned no less than $100,000 in commissions each month from her sales of my Nate products through, because when I first read that, I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> but of course it continues and says through the work of plaintiff and her downline team members. And obviously, yes, like recruiting someone, they are buying a product pack. So yes, that would that would count as a sale, right? And it is just so interesting. And I've said this in multiple other videos that I filmed this week too. I swear to God, all I'm talking about is money right now. It's very annoying. <laughs> And I'm sorry. We got more content coming, I promise. And a new podcast. What? Who? Where? I don't know. Who said that? Did you hear that? I was weird. There's a ghost in here. A podcast ghost. A real cloudy podcast ghost. That's strange. So I did mention in um, a few other videos or one other video. I don't know. My life's a blur at this point. Where the number of reps that they had during like 2020, like the people they were able to recruit was so high. Like, I mean, arguably I would say allegedly speculation, whatever an opinion would be that during 2020, they recruited so many people like 2020, 2021 numbers are outrageous. And so seeing that direct correlation, it could be maybe not, I don't know where that was like their highest sales revenue year. Like yeah. And then those numbers of my Nate reps have consistently, you know, dwindled just from what my Nate reps themselves have said. If that, you know, if we do believe that to be true, which come on, usually we don't believe anything they say, but still. And then also you can clearly tell from this beautiful graph that we made from the information that we sought out on the interwebs, which has been confirmed, like confirmed by money themselves. It's just interesting that it's like, wow, they did so well that year, or like those two years, and their numbers were pretty high. But then also they had so many money reps at that point, and now they have a lot less. I just think that like that's not that's not a coincidence. Obviously, you know, I am of the opinion that those two things are directly related to each other. All right, so in number 21, it says, as stated above, between 2015 and 2022, plaintiff routinely earned more than one hundred thousand dollars a month in commission payments. Since 2022, plaintiff has seen her commissions reduced repeatedly. To that end, plaintiff's commissions have fallen to the point where her earnings over the course of a year are now less than what she used to earn in two months. What? <laughs> now she's making like 200, 300 thousand a month or was when she was still in money. I mean, going from like, what, what would that have been? Upwards of a million, two million a year? to like 200,000 a year, like, ugh, yikes. All right, so one question in the drop of earnings, despite strong sales, Monet's leadership has caused plaintiff to endure repeated verbal and written warnings of disassociation from a position she has built with Monet for a list of unsupported violations of Monet's corporate policy and procedures. But if you look at the sales numbers that are self-reported basically from Monet, but in like that chart that we did from I don't have them from 2015, but from like 2019, 2020, 2021, and then 2022, 2023. And then from this year too, which we don't have the full, but we have, we can see like, it seems like it's still declining. It's just strange that like, it says like, oh, my commissions have fallen like 
a crazy amount, yet my team is, you know, selling a lot, which apparently, I mean, from what Tony and her husband have said, like they had almost like 92% of money reps under them, like in their downline, in their organization. So it's like, but if this total sales revenue is going lower, like, yeah, obviously your commission would change, right? That that aspect, I'm like, what? As y'all can see, like, listen, I might be a little bit biased because like I cannot stand money. However, also I'm allowed to be biased, who cares? But I also, like, if you wrong, you wrong, you know? And then continuing, you know, we already had seen on the other, prior to this being amended, complaints that she had been excluded from founder calls, leadership calls, all that. Uh, basically like things that she had had access to because she was like the first person and like a top leader, a top money rep that now she like didn't have access to it anymore. So that's just so culty of trying to get someone to be quiet and, you know, discouraging them from speaking out, which like, how'd that work for you? <laughs> Clearly it didn't work, but trying to scare them into silence. And I mean, it's kind of just like how a lot of creators get cease and desist and threatened with lawsuits and stuff like that. And it's even if the people don't have a legal leg to stand on, you know, it's annoying and scary. And it's just trying to, again, scare someone into silence and to falling in line and, you know, don't rock the boat and things like that, right? It's very sad, very culty. All right, so as a result of her termination, Tony has had her access to her commissions revoked. I mean, obviously, duh. <laughs> you got fired, duh. Her downline team has been absorbed by the defendant, Monet, which has unjustly enriched the defendant at the expense of the plaintiff. So in my unprofessional, not legal at all opinion, my understanding is that including that is to show like, yeah, you did this because you financially like this financially benefited you by firing me because instead of, and not necessarily like, oh, now the CEO is, is those people's upline and now like he's getting those, you know, commissions and rewards, not necessarily, but meaning like, like sh if she's removed and that downline doesn't roll up to like another person, think about how much money money it's saving by not having to pay Tony $100,000 a month. Like, ooh, <laughs> yikes. That's pretty crazy. There are other top reps better watch out. <laughs> But yeah, that's that was a very interesting aspect of this that I, I really didn't even think of. I was like, oh dang, not only like are they saving a lot of money, but then that could illustrate a an extra motive or whatever for them monetarily. And the rest of this from like the next four pages is really just everything else that we already read on the other complaints and some stuff that's a little bit redundant. Not necessarily, but to me it's redundant. It's just like things slightly worded a different way or things that we already know. So number 53, uh, Tony's reputation has been smeared by the defendants in order to keep her downline team members in line in such a way that plaintiff's simple requests for information on her team's behalf have been buried and instead the defendants have attempted to frame plaintiff's team leadership as ineffective and incompetent. I personally take that as like and again, this is alleged I, speculation, whatever. I take that as like her telling her team, like, okay, I'm asking them and like the commission structure is off and it's been changed or whatever. Like they're doing something wrong. Them coming back and being and to her team being like, no, she's just an ineffective leader. And that's why y'all aren't getting paid more. Like, yikes, that sucks. If true, that sucks. I just need to start saying like, if true, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Can y'all tell that I reread the, <laughs> the cease and desist I got from Monet a few years ago? Spooky then and it's spooky now. <laughs> So plaintiff is in possession of numerous emails. As we said before, I really hope that she has like all this to back it up and apparently she does. That makes me really happy so that we can see those things. Numerous emails relating to the commission structure in which she has asked for clarification on the structure and has been rebuffed with a smoke screen of incomprehensible verbiage from various members of defendants executive staff. Isn't that just like, listen, I'm not laughing because like that's funny, but also that's hilarious because it's like, now you know how we feel. <laughs> it's like the the incomprehensible, nonsensical girl boss jargon doesn't just stop with the money reps or the, the girl bosses. It is so deep <laughs> in this industry. It's also with the like corporate side. But sounds like Tony woke up. I mean, not too much because she went to another MLM, but like then again, that's like all she knows. I don't expect her to not do that or, you know, whatever. Show the receipts, Tony, let me see. Plaintiff believes the underpayment to be valued at no less than $2 million based on her history with the company and her experience in dealing with the commission structures as promulgated by money. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing promulgated, right? Like declared, kind of like how I declare bankruptcy, you know? Kind of like that. 
I mean, I would agree with that. I mean, she's made a crap ton of money with money. And if they, if true, if they were underpaying her, I'd say that's pretty accurate. I'd actually say like, that's an underpayment. Like you're selling yourself short there, girlfriend. Maybe, I don't know. What do I know? Nothing. Down with defamation. This is where we get spicy. Let's get it, boo. So it says the corporation's agents, as well as the Erdinettas, have repeatedly defamed Tonester to her own downline team members, as well as the public at large. Specifically, the corporation's agents have misled members of plaintiff's downline team into believing that plaintiff was failing them as a mentor, as well as telling her team and the public at large. It's so funny when they say the public at large, because I'm just like, who, d who did they tell? Maybe the public at large means like, other people in the company, like corporate employees, maybe, I don't know. That plaintiff was leaving money to work with another company. That definitely does suck if, if true. But then also she was like, if from her own account, uh, that she was like looking around to see like, okay, like I need to get out. I need to, you know, make an exit plan. And, and that could be true that, you know, she was just joining other MLMs to maybe like joining just to like get access to certain things. I don't know, that just sounds like strange because it's a girl, you're literally like top of the industry. I bet you could just call CEOs and see. But again, I feel like if you want like the real information, you gotta talk to people like mid-ranking and like at the bottom and really get in there. Cause her husband even said himself on his Instagram that he, like that they were offered like bridge contracts and however you wanna phrase it, stuff like that. And I guess they were like, yeah, that just sounds gross. We don't wanna do that. I like that. But then also that possibly could have had like a not great outcome in regards to this. So who knows? Again, not me. Alrighty, so those are the updates that we have. Apparently, allegedly, this is all just speculation, if true. There's, like I said, apparently a lot more information that Tony and her husband have. I mean, I've heard that from multiple people. Again, I don't know that to be true. That's just speculation. I would assume so, though, because like, I mean, she's not dumb. Like, why would you say like, no, they've been doing this, that, and blank, blank, blank without <laughs> without having like a paper trail, right? Like that would be silly. You can't just be like, well, they said this and not have anything to back it up, right? One thing that I did find interesting was at the beginning, it did say like exhibit A, they changed their commission structure. And then they actually included the compensation plan and like how it's changed. All right, so for instance, it says um, exhibit A, but then like there's no... I don't want to say like a timestamp, but you know, sometimes like on the commission structures, it'll say USA commission plan, blank, 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 right? And it'll say like the year, but none of these say the year. Actually, just kidding. This one says to join the Monate Motor Club renewals or upgrades after June 15th, 2022. So it looks like this possibly was from the same year then. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just missing something. I'll look further into it after I send all this to Ethan and we'll go from there. But yeah, that's super interesting. And yeah, I mean, clearly these are, like these are different. There are clear differences in this. Anyway, so clearly on here, yes, the compensation plan was changed. Like there are different things on here, but I'm thinking that these are both from 2022 and maybe it just wasn't explained correctly to these reps and they didn't realize it. That's it. I will keep you updated. I feel awkward because Tony and Bean are standing at the door to my office staring at me as I'm filming my outro and Wiggum is continuously farting under my desk. So I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, weekend, whenever you're watching this. And if you are subscribed and only if you're subscribed, your butt looks good. And if you're not subscribed, I don't know what you're doing and you're dead to me. And I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.